<laughs> that was <laughs> but that's but she was so excited, and when you do that, people want to come and see, and so they see your life change, and then they want they want to come and see. That's that's the way the um, Popeyes chicken made sixty five million dollars. Sixty five million dollars. Word of mouth. Everybody was talking about how good that chicken is. And blah, blah, blah. My sister Cindy was all the way from Scotland. And she said, Y'all give me that chicken sandwich. I ain't got time to stand. I want to, I want to. But it's because everybody was talking about it. Yeah. That's how you start selling Jesus. You know, and you invite him to the church. Why well, ain't trying to get him to my church? Why not? Everybody else is. That's why everybody else church does nothing. Because it's word of mouth. Just word, just come. Just come. And I ain't trying to get up. You ain't have to know. Word of mouth. And I want to fill up the day. I send our days. Help me. Tell them how good we are. Because we are good. That's a good day. Care. Tell them how good we are. If you don't support your own. Right. Terry Barber had the thing that you support what you want to last. That's right. So if you want it to last, you support it. Yeah. Right? And so we're here. We got a business. Why not support that? It's a fool. It's a foolish woman, Mother Seabrook. Married to a man, and she support. I'm. I use me. I'm married to a pastor, and I'm going to support every other man in the building except pastor. And when they come to pastor, it's just going to be well. You know, he's such a good pastor. No, I'm going to talk about him. Even though I talk about all these men real good, I'm talking about him real good. Right? That's my husband. You understand what I'm saying? I'm talking about life changes better than any church in this city. That's right. Anywhere. Why? Because this is my church. That's right. That's right. And I'm happy about being here. That's right. And then I'm going to talk about dream builders better than anything else. Why? That's my church. That's my daycare. Yes. Yes. And we're making sure go. So I'm not going to say, well, going nowhere to Cradle. Cradle, you know, Cradle got about 500 children and you can pay less. I don't care what Cradle pay. Come to life. Come to dream builders. You know, I'm not going to build nobody else's. Why go build somebody else and don't build my own? That's right. That's you understand? I said, we got good preachers right here. I know Pastor was tired. Tawanda had major surgery on her mouth and all that. We got elders. I don't think who here on Tuesday night. We got elders right here. Ministers. We don't have to go bring nobody else here. We got folks right here. That's right. Do, do y'all understand? We just as good. A better, I think, I believe in pastor. We always talk about the people in the church. Because we believe in the people in this church. You understand what I'm saying? And I heard somebody t tell me the other day, well, they're kicking you in your butt. They don't, I don't even care. They push you in. Yes. And then you got about three members here. They ain't pushing you. They trying to build other people's stuff. I don't care. Because what God got ever had, we've been here, what, 25 years? That's right. That's it. We ain't stopped yet. We got 20 acres of full paid land. Woo! Full paid land. We got dreams and vision. And we got people here that are worth investing in. You understand? We're pushing it. I got Sister Priscilla, come go with me. Make sure you go out there to um, work with class friends. And her stuff just as good as anybody else. And I ain't trying to push everybody. I'm used, I use Priscilla. Somebody said, well, do you need a mic? You don't see my stuff. You know I don't need nobody. Okay. I can take you to the next level. She take me to the next level. Amen. But does she know this? I don't know if she knows or not. What did you? What is she supposed to know? Because <laughs> <laughs> whatever you can do, she can do better. Thank you, mother. Thank but you. she will do better. She will. Well, why would I go out right there? Did you understand? Pastor needs it. Why? Why would I take pastor to any other tailor without these men? With these men in here who can dress? Right. <laughs> you know, y'all want a car? Go, go, go to Elder Allen. Right. Go get a new car from here. You, whatever kind of, go get it. Right. We got people right here. We're going to support our own. Right. This is us. Yes. Priscilla say, we are they. You need a good back scratching? Nobody scratching your back? We're scratching on the back of the chair. <laughs> but then we, we are they. You, you understand what I'm saying? We are they. We make us work. I, I love this church. Yeah. And I will yeah. fight for, I ain't, I ain't gonna talk about in the spirit. I fight for you in the spirit. Right. But I will fight somebody for you. That's right. 
Young daddies know they were trying to say, well, they honey, don't do that. I will, honey, don't do that. <laughs> I said, I will fight to my niece when was in life change. That I would. I'm the first lady anointed of the Lord. <laughs> and I am. But I will fight you about life changes. You know, you understand your sin because God, this, I love what we do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I love, I love the people here. Elder Elder come I love this sister. Man, we we own it. I got to meet Chester. I got to ask um Chester, is she a prophet or something? Y'all believe her stuff from Praise the Lord? I'm like, who is she? Who do I, I got to get our investigators on her? Y'all don't know we got investigators in this church, do They better than the FBI. Yes, they are. And I'm not just saying they come one walk in, but we got some good investigators in this church. <laughs> And, and then they ask, but Dr. Torres was saying, Dr. Torres will tell you, people were thinking that the way we love each other, y'all, I think Kira know because she and Dr. Torres were, they were thinking that it was fake. Yes. That they didn't think we were real. <laughs> so they haven't got a story for that, too. Yeah. They didn't think we were real. Me and Pastor Gorin being there for, for the members, we didn't tell the members telling it. Right. You, you understand? They didn't think that job was real. But it is. It is. You know, we love for real. Ain't no, ain't no fake. This is real stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we had pastors trying to do it. Minister Marvin sat down with us, and we talked for hours. Oh, yeah. It ain't no fake. But you got to love what you in. Yeah. You know, I love being married. That's why I promote it. I'm saying. I love being married. Somebody asked me if something happened to pastor, you married again? Uh, because he got me spoiled riding. I just want to have all my sons and my daughter. Y'all doesn't love me. I want nothing to happen to neither one of us. Yes, but do you understand what I'm saying? And so as he's talking, then you then you're able to give Jesus. Yes. Cause they're gonna see first. If you're tearing up your house, they're gonna want to come to the Jesus that you're in. Right. Yes. Mm, honey, let me tell you, we got a good church, but let me tell you about Karen. Mm, let me tell you, we gotta watch her. And not just her, you gotta watch Silva. Mike, you gotta watch him if you come in here. Ain't nobody coming in here. Right. You gotta watch out on people. <laughs> Hold on to your partner. <laughs> 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 nobody going through all of that. You know, but you got to look, and I know I'm the pastor wife, oh. but but you can put you to me, Pastor Mandrell is the teacher of Christendom. Yes. Right. I'm telling you. Amen. That's just what it's all about right there. Getting on fire for God. Getting on fire for the ministry that he's got you placed in. And, and, and like I told y'all before, um, um, you got to know you got to know your role, um, but be a part of the entire ministry. Um, my job as an elder, when you come in fresh like I have been, it's not to come and take over nothing. It ain't for me to come and show off or, or anything like that. But my job is to come and undergird uh, pastor and, and missionary and the administrative staff, the ministerial staff are coming under girth. So this lesson is strategic. This lesson is strategic to get y'all on fire that you can understand and know who you are in the church. Amen. You the ones that go out into the whole world, not pastor. <laughs> we, we go out into the whole world and we compel men uh, unto Christ. Amen. And some of y'all are not from the highways and hedges, so don't go out there. Huh? So just go where you know where you can go and say to the people what you have to say. Uh, now, some of us are from the highways and hedges, and we can talk um, to ex-gangsters and ex-drug dealers and, you know, in that level. We can talk on that level because the Lord has done something for us. So as we move on, and, and you understand now that you are salespeople, that you understand now that you first must allow the, the, the love of Jesus Christ on the inside of you to um, exemplify, exemplify itself, himself on the outside of you, that when they look upon you, that they don't just see you now, but now they see the love of Jesus Christ on the inside of you. And now their approach towards you is something completely different. I told a brother the other day, I said, hey, listen, you know, I love being here in Gaston County because I can see the Bible. The Bible says I'd much rather you be uh, hot or cold because if you 
lukewarm, then I'll be out of my mouth. Amen. So I said, uh, some of these brothers, boy, they just real cold. So when I tell them that I love them, they got to do something with that. You understand? Yeah. When I tell you that I love you, you got to do something with that. Mm -hmm. brother, that brother show is weird. It's <laughs> <laughs> a different type of brother right there. Huh? Yeah. And you walk around telling folks he love. I want to be, I want to be for real. I want to be for real. But with a handshake and a smile and, and warm words to let them know that I care, they can see that I am for real. Amen. So mother was all over my uh, my lesson. Uh, you know, after you after you do your meet and greet, you have to uh, uh, be strategic about this next part. Fact finding, uh, getting to know them, uh, understanding how to discern the dialogue. Right? Um, um, do you know Jesus? <laughs> you know, sometimes. That don't work. Um, um, you know, how you doing? How's everything going in, in, in your life? Is there anything that um, I can do for you? Um, you know, in a natural sense, and not that you can do everything for somebody, because people will try and use you. Okay, people will try and, and and use you, and as you open that door, you have to be very very careful. And, and not to allow them to abuse the love that you have for them on the inside. But you want to be strategic about the fact finding, you know, what are some of the needs um, that people have that need to be met? Sometimes it could just be food. Sometimes it could just be a lending of an ear, right? Because they've gone through a hard day. Or maybe it's just a, a, a small financial struggle. Or, or maybe it's a relationship that is constrained, right, that, that they just want to be able to talk to somebody. And as you are there, if you will listen to them, amen, as you listen to them, they will they will do what? Offload a little bit of weight unto you. For the Bible says, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest, what? For your soul, and you can take my yoke up on you, and do what? Because at that point in time when they learn, and what, what is that strategic point in time when they're learning? That's you talking. <laughs> when they're learning, that's you talking, right? Now, now that's that time when the Holy Ghost will give you what to say. Okay. And that hour, he'll give you how to minister to, to them, okay? And this is where we cannot have the spirit of fear, right? But we have to have the spirit of what? Of love. Amen, right? And then the, the, the little scriptures, and these signs, Mark 16, 17, these signs shall follow them that and, and my name shall they cast out devils and shall speak with new tongues. That's not always uh, your love language. That could just be you changing from negative to positive. That's you being discouraged to encourage. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Amen. Sometimes we won't lay our sanctified hands on nobody. Amen. And so you have to just be careful about exercising your gifts, but if the Lord says so, you have to do it. Amen. So strategically fact find and understand exactly where that person's at. And then there's a couple other things that you need to be able to do at this point in time. You need to be able to look back over your life instead of judging them. You need to be able to look back over your life to see where the Lord has brought you from. Right? And as your soul begins to cry, hallelujah, don't do it in front of them. Don't say hallelujah. You know what I mean? But what you do is you show mercy. And you show compassion and you let grace extend to that person, right? And you have to, at that point in time, there's something very strategic that you can do. You can give a testimony of what God has done for you. Sister, brother, I was once in that place. My God, and I remember it oh so well. We get saved and forget about all the things that we ever done, right? It's not true. You still remember how to cuss? <laughs> Help us. <laughs> Help us. You remember. You might not do it. Cover by the blood. 
Because you remember how to do it. Don't you do it. Amen. <laughs> Don't you do it. Amen. No gal. God love you, Mother Jesus. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> but you want to give a testimony, a sweet testimony of how the Lord brought you from one place and took you to another place. Something that they can relate to in the time that they are listening and taking that yoke up on them for the burdens of his life. For his yoke is easy and his burdens is light. We don't want to weigh them down, but we want to release them. Right? We want to release them. Amen. And so at this time, right, we, 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 we have to have a demonstration in, in that testimony. And sometimes when you testify, when you testify, it's not always with your words. It could just be in how you carry yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It could be how you carry yourself. There's more word for that. There's more word for that. Um, in 2 Corinthians 3, 1 through 3, do we begin uh, to command ourselves? Or need we, as some other epistles of commendation to you, or letters of commendation from you, ye are (laughs) our epistles written in our hearts, known and read of all men. Okay, For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart, right? The love of God, the law of God, the commandments of God, the statutes of God are going to be written in your heart. I always say this, and I'm careful when I say it, but I mean it. You can take the church and set it over here. You can take the Bible and set it over but give me the Holy Ghost. Give me the Holy Ghost. The pastor asked me a real strong question. What about the Holy Ghost do you want? Amen. What about the Holy Ghost do you want? But it's the power and the love of God. It's the, it's the leading and the guiding me in the way of truth. It's him calling me his son and telling me that I'm his own when we walk day and day in prayer. And, 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 and we walk by the wayside, right? And there is times when you have to let people know that yes, I struggle. Right. Yes, I go through. Yes, everything's not always blue skies and sunshine. You know, it's not always like that. But sometimes it rains. Right. right. But when it does rain, when it does rain, this Jesus that I'm telling you about. Yes, sir. This Jesus lifts me up. This Jesus takes care of my every need. This Jesus comes in whenever the floods come in. The Jesus comes in and reminds me that everything's going to be all right. We have to remember what Jesus has done for us and where he has brought us from. In salvation, in salvation, well, how do I get saved? How do I get saved? Listen, you can lead somebody to salvation right then and there. You don't have to wait to bring them to church. Huh? You can lead them. See, that's the thing about us salespeople. That's the thing about us as salespeople is that we got to know when to close the deal. Yes, sir. Huh? You got to know when to close the deal. You can lead somebody to salvation right then and there. It can start with prayer. Yes. And you know what? Sometimes I don't ask them anything. I pray the prayer for them, touching and agreeing. Lord, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for your mercy and your grace. Thank you for your forgiveness, Lord. Thank you for being so merciful, Lord. Forgive me of all of my sins. I repent before you right now. I don't want to do anything to make you ashamed. Right, Lord, come into my heart, Lord, and be the God of my salvation. Lord, I need you right now. I believe in you, God. Right? Here we go. I believe. Y'all know this prayer? Huh? <laughs> Y'all ever pray with somebody? Yeah. Wait a second. I don't want to hear the pastor. And we go back to talking. Huh? Y'all, listen. You can do it. You can do it. You have to You have to get yourself in the place where you muster up the strength and you muster up the courage and you have the intestinal fortitude 
to teach and preach Jesus. You have to be able to deliver this message and this content with clarity and know exactly what you're doing. You gotta be skillful in this. You can't just run out there any type of way because you might have holes in your armor, right? You don't want that to be the case. You wanna go out there skillfully and present Jesus with clarity. Okay, you understand that this product, there's nothing like this product in all the earth. Nothing like this product in all the heavens. This is the only product of its kind. There is only one Savior. There's only one Deliverer. There's only one Redeemer of man. There is only one, right? I'm telling you. I'm telling you, There's only. Okay, now. Okay. There's only one, okay? So you want to deliver this, this message uh, with clarity, go all the way through that prayer, and then at the end of that, lay your sanctified hands on that person. Now watch this, watch this. Because we won't do it. I gotta teach this, I gotta teach this. Ready? I go to Life Changes Church of God in Christ. And if you don't have a church home, I would like to invite you to my church. Because they be singing in there, and girl, let me tell you something. They be worshiping, and them drums be going. They even got this little dude named uh, 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 Safari, and he be playing the drums, too, and be singing. They got this Minister Boatman, he just be going for it, and be singing. And he won't ever stop singing. The people be looking at him, and he just keep the glory of God coming in that place. And boy, let me tell you something, you can't see it on nobody. You can see it on Minister Bowman. And then something happened to me. I get excited. Then the whole church going for it. It's all Minister Bowman's fault. But he us you the Lord. I'm trying to tell you. And then you know what? You get them, and then they having a good time. And then you know what they, they just want to know. Is it real? Let me come see this boy. He, he always talking about this here. Church. Huh? Okay. And Sister Danette, I be like, man, I feel like she an angel that fell from heaven. But she landed at life changing. But I know she's saved. <laughs> Come on, leave me alone. <laughs> I know she's saved. Praise be to God. <laughs> yes, you got to be excited about what you're doing. But at this time, once you embrace, you're letting them know, hey, listen, there's some place I go that helps me day in and day out. Right on Sundays, I come and I recharge. And I'm empowered. On Tuesdays, we have Tuesday night Bible study, and I'm passing. They some busy folks. I want to stay up sleep, but I see them on Facebook. They can, they can dress. They be all over the place. You know, you just be, and then people get excited about excitement. <laughs> Some people get excited about excitement. So y'all want to y'all want to um, 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 encourage people, encourage people to come. Okay. Um, let me keep on going. I call that a strategic invitation um, to God through Christ Jesus, through prayer. Say you cannot be afraid to pray with somebody. There are certain times when God calls you to pray when it just don't seem like this is the atmosphere uh, uh, that prayer should go forward in, but it's the exact atmosphere where prayer should go forward. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let me tell y'all something. I wear my wife out. I wear her out. I'd be like, honey, come downstairs. Uh, we'd be at work. And she'd be like, what? I, I said, get the oil. She get the oil. Get the oil. And I go to my office. I lay hands with them for, I go to praying in that office for people, man. And they feel so much better when they leave my office. They leave my office with a car and with Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> they leave my office with a car and they leave with Jesus. Amen. I'm telling you, I don't mind telling it about the Lord. Amen. We thank God. Amen. Um, 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 the, the Bible. And, and I will give them one heart. And I will put a new spirit within you. And I will take the stony heart out of their flesh. And I will give them a heart of flesh. Saints. The Lord will do his part. The Lord will do the part. We don't have to do that part for the Lord. Amen. Our only job is this, just this one thing, just this introduction and this invitation. Mm -hmm. huh? Can we do that? The Lord will do the way. All we got to do is lift up the name of Jesus. If I be lifted up, 
before me. I will draw all men. I'll be lifted up. I will draw all men. That's all we got to do is lift up the name. It's good for me to come in here and give God praise. Mm -hmm. But it's better for me to tell somebody else how I come and give God praise. Is that all right? Because what the Lord can do for me, he can do, he can do for others. Amen. And this is a covenant from the Lord about uh, this, 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 this uh, writing, uh, writing up on their hearts. Uh, Hebrews 8 and 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to push just a little bit. I'm just going to push just a little bit. Has the Lord ever told you to do something and you didn't do it? You see what I mean? Yeah. Okay, y'all ready for this? Here we go. And we're going to let you back out. I'm going to check out. He didn't know what to do with right and do it did not. Sin to who? It's a sin to himself. What separation from the love of God? So sometimes it says the love of God constrains me. It constrains me sometimes, saints, when you don't feel like it, That's right. when you don't feel like it, the love of God will be there to sustain you. Okay, he'll be there to be with you and to gird, undergird you through that one situation that you don't feel like going through. Let me go to where mother, let me go to where mother was, uh, was at, the, the lady at the well. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is, is, is the perfect witness. If you want to understand how to be a good salesperson of the per you might as well see the product sell itself. That's right. No, it's just like a ram truck. It's one of it's in the Bible. It was in the bush. <laughs> now Jacob's well there. Was there Jesus, therefore being weary? with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Okay, Jesus saith unto her, give me the drink. The Samaritans, right? Um, some people get bored, uh, 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 or see, let's see, let me see, some people get wrong, some people get wrong, because they'll call them half-breeds, yeah. or they'll call them mixed folks. Yeah. <laughs> These people have been around for a long time. We got to be a lot nicer to these folks. Right. These folks, we done gave them names a lot. Look, they just people, okay? Yeah. Samaritans has been around for a long time. Yeah. Jesus said, give me the drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy me. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that thou being a Jew askest a drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Y'all, we have to understand, we're not better than nobody. Jesus loves us all the same. So I'm called to a higher calling, but that's a higher level of responsibility, and to whom much is given. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldst have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Y'all see how, 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 how Jesus is, is, um, He's smart. He uses wisdom right here yes. with the Samaritan, right? He's like, uh, you, I'm asking you for something to drink, but you really need to be asking me for something to drink. That would raise my eyebrow if I was her, yes. right? Jesus said unto her and said unto her, I, if thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that saith to thee, give me the drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. And, and, and the well is deep from whence uh, then hast thou that living water. Amen. People always going to give you um, excuses. Right? People always going to give you excuses. It's not for you to, to accept those excuses. Those excuses are just defense mechanisms. In sales, what you need to do is turn a no into a yes. Typically, you do that by asking a question. If I had a bucket, would you go to the well and give me something to drink? You put that back on them and give them something to do. 
And the woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep from whence thou hast the living, the living water. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, and give us the well, and drink therefore himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water uh, springing up into everlasting life. Amen. And so, y'all, listen, as salespeople, y'all have to understand, it's our duty to go out and witness to the, to the world. It's our responsibility to go out and share the love of Christ. It's our responsibility to grow these pews. Amen. And we just not in like the, pro in the prosperity ministry. But listen, let me tell you what's exciting. Let me tell you what's exciting. What's exciting is watching somebody be delivered. What's exciting is watching somebody come through. What's exciting is seeing somebody come up to the altar one way and they turn around and they leave a completely different way. What's exciting is when they go back out of that door, they say, you know what? I got a whole host of people that's on my side, right? Um, 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 there, was a, there was an example given about uh, uh, Elijah and Elisha on last Sunday, but that I understood because uh, when, 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 when Elisha with, was with Elijah and they were in the mountains, and the enemy was surrounding them, uh, Elijah could not see, right? But Elijah said, hey, listen, Father, show Elisha them that are with us and are greater than, than, than them that are with them. And so when he looked into the mountains, he seen a host of, of angels on chariots of fire. So let me tell you something. The saints, us together, we are somebody. Right? We are some type of body, a body of baptized believers going forward into a dying world, and we can make a difference. But you got to believe that down on the inside. And then not only do you got to believe that, but you got to put it into application. You got to try it for yourself. You got to go meet somebody, tell them your name, introduce yourself, and let them see the love of God down on the inside of you. And once they see the love of God on the inside of you, then you witness to them. Is that all right? Is that all right? But well, we got to try it. We got to try it. Do I have any salespeople? That's good. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. God keep you. We love you. Amen. At this time. Oh, you got a comment. Yeah, I got another comment. I was just thinking as you was talking, I was just thinking the woman sent the people back to the place where she met Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so wouldn't this, and you was talking about what was exciting, wouldn't this be exciting? So you're in the Department of Education, though, and they're coming to see you because you have told other people all of this and deliverance is happening, this is happening, and so they're coming to the Department of Education and you might have to move it out to the set somewhere because everybody can do, can y'all see, the, can you see them coming to the main warehouse looking for you, Department of Social Work, they look in, they say, where's this man, where's this woman who, who told me uh, okay, so you told Bobby this and that, and Bobby didn't heal about So as you were talking, I yes. saw all of it. Can y'all see that? And then on Sunday mornings, everybody coming in, y'all bringing in 20, 30 people, sitting with you on your own, you don't start at your own. Can y'all see that? Yes. You don't got me excited, yes, man. Sure. I saw that as you was talking. Because yes. oh. that was the woman at the well did, and she said, Come, and Jesus was still at the well when they came. Yeah. And so you're there, making a difference, showing it, and then here they come. I saw you Sunday, those guys were standing up, the people who came with you, and the lady who left for keys came with a friend of yours named Brandon, who came with somebody else who was older. Ask me how I know all that. I was on the phone with him today. Lance in there was on the phone with him today. I was wondering, I'm asking a question. So you came Sunday, da 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 da. You know, so that right there, you just got a bunch of people, that was about nine or ten people who came to hear you preach, but don't just bring them when you preach. <laughs> huh? And that, that, that was a good point, woman. You don't just blame when you preach. Pastor preach it almost every Sunday. Am I right? Or y'all want to do? Y'all want to answer? No, that's right. I mean, that's right. So they, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, I mean, just keep inviting them just as much, not just when it's your turn. That's how you get people to keep coming. Because I'm not just interested in me. I'm talking about my whole church. Yes. 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 And then they say, I only invite people just when I'm preaching. They won't come. I'm not never preaching. <laughs> right? But I invite them because I know we got, we, we got the, he don't who, and I got, we got this text from someone who was 
concerned about him being a hooper, but they received so much more since they've been here. And that's, that's what it's about. So you invite them because pastor can take a period. And that's how I sell it. Pastor can take a period and give you a word out of this world. You know, and I, and, and I tell him, oh, he's raising us up. We're all good. We have some powerful people. Even people without title. We're not getting, and you say, stand in your lane. We, we teach your lane, but we say, just drive. Yes, yes. Because sometimes people won't do nothing because they ain't none of my lane. You ain't got no lane. That's why we don't have no special seating. Except we like the ministerial staff to sit up front. You know? Do y'all get this? Yes. This yes. is all our stuff. Yes. So the Bible said, what's well, some of your hands fun to do? Do it. Because some of them who in the lane ain't driving right. Amen. They slow and you want to jump have a roadway and jump. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> but y'all from the South Antonio? He's fine. Uh, he ain't. He's okay. Oh. Yeah. 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 Let's see them nine and ten come on in here Sunday. Thank you, Marvin. Come on here, somebody. Yeah. But that's that's how you do it. You understand? So just keep them fighting. Wait a second. He ain't saying nothing. <laughs> y'all know the preacher. Come on, man. Praise the Lord, Saint. Hallelujah. I enjoy this, and it's just like you start a fire, and you get catch hold of that fire, and it continues, continues to get people encouraged in the Lord. I love the Lord Jesus Christ so much, yeah. and whatever He asks of me and want me to do. But the great thing of just like um, Elder was saying, when you teach people and you bring people and you love people, you show it, right? This little old lady then coming to church with me, I, when I was even in Monticello, I asked God, I said, Lord, give me big enough car or van that I can take people to church. I don't want a little small car and we would crank in and it's just not right. So the Lord, you know how you go in, your credit all right, but you be praying, Lord, give me this car. But when I told the Lord that I want to do this, take people to church, I walk right down to the dealership, and, and I told her, I don't have no problem. I know now that I got good credit, so give me my car. And that man went right on, let me do the numbers, and went right on there and brought me my van. All right, mother. You see, when we're doing it for the Lord, right. and in your heart that you really want to do this, right. and that you want people to have a good life also, and share Jesus with them, God will make a way out of it. But anyway, this little lady, I used to give a ride all the way to myself. And she still followed me. And she didn't have a car at the time, right? And I would take her, take her. Now this little old lady is 80 years old. And she got her own little car, you know? And she drove her own stairs. And I said, Lord, thank you. That not only that, you know, I brought, but now she wants to come. So that's a great thing because I love Jesus and I share Jesus. And whatever the needs, I met the needs of the people. We have people right in our church that got needs, and we got to reach out and help those people, right? And keep them, they don't give up. That's my thing. We bring them, and then if we just drop the ball and don't keep up and follow with them, encourage them, then what, what's the purpose of all that work? We got to continue consistency. Consistent, consistent. All right, mother.
the same thing, but um, you know, Mr. Book is very intentional about his follow-up. So, Saints, if you invite somebody out, take a take a um, earnest um, interest in following up with them and, and making sure that they enjoy themselves. Amen. 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 Ed, I want you to look at this because you stopped at verse uh, 15. In verse 15 it says, The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Yes. If you see what Jesus did, he talked about what they had in common about the water. But what he did, he changed her appetite. He changed her appetite. And she said, okay, I don't want this, but give me what you have. Yes. And if you look at it, and you know, if you follow through through the whole account, she never, it never is recorded that she um, left with the bunch of matter of fact, it says she left on water pipes. Yeah. Because she left with a different regression yes. than what she came from. So in other words, your witness has to be so convincing mm. that you change that person's appetite. <laughs> you got to change their appetite, you have to change their desire. And the good thing about it is that he did not just come up with some deep theological thing. He dealt with what they had in common right then. You know, so yeah, they come talk about the weather. Yes, yeah, talk about the weather. But talk about how God is the Lord of the weather. That's right. You know, how he can calm the sea. You know, how he can quiet the storm. And I, I, and I tell you all, I truly believe because the saints pray is that we don't have a prayer. Amen. Amen. You see, so there's, there's proof. And some people may, may doubt it, but That's right. be convincing in your argument. Yes. Amen. That's how lawyer win cases. He's convincing right. in his arguments. That's you know, right. so that's what you, once you convince of something, then it's easier now for you to persuade someone else of what you're convinced about. But if you're not convinced yourself, you can never sell it. That's, that's right. right. You know, I can never sell you a car that I don't think that's, that's going right. to <laughs> You know, it, it may be right, right good today, but you know, it's good for another week. <laughs> no, you never, you won't sell a thing, you know, so you have to be, you have to convince an argument. Uh, you know what God has done for you. Oh, yeah. you know, all you do is just share it. Just share it. And the good thing about it, with, and I love what you said when you pray, even if you pray for them then to get saved, and you know, a lot of people, you want to say, well, I need to go and get this straight. I need to go and get that straight and all this other stuff. Well, the thing of it is, if you could get everything straight yourself, you wouldn't need Jesus. That's right. So let's go and pray now that maybe you'll straighten it up by the time you get home. Uh -huh. You know, so what? Don't leave without being able to offer them the prayer and to be able to pray for them. Amen. 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 Lift up the name of Jesus whenever we pray. Um, that, that the joy of the Lord comes in and that it gives them strength, right? Yes. Because it's the joy of the Lord that, that is our strength. Amen. Yes. So, you know, we, I take, you know, Y'all, they get me because I hang on a lot of words, but I believe in the spoken word of God. Amen. I believe in it. When it comes through or comes over what we call the pulpit, I, I let that, it goes on my heart. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And if it don't line up with the word of God, then um, I, 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 I dismiss it. Yeah, I dismiss it. So, um, Pastor is absolutely right. At the end of this, um, the next part of the um, chapter is um, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Amen. And he's teaching the multitude. So, amen. What's next? God bless you. I love you. I'm saying for you. We have talked. I've uh, messed up songs. Amen. We thank God for our pastor. Amen. Come on, let's praise God for the reality.